Hello and welcome to all of you. This is Afros. I am from University of Brunei Darussalam, Brunei. Brunei is a small country in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, today I'll be talking about basin and lake formation during the tectonic convergence in northwestern Himalayas uh, because the motivation is to understand how the, the basins and lakes are linked and, and there's a link, there's a track link between, uh, between faults and, and that's what I'm going to uh, cover. So um, before that, I would like to congratulate and uh, thank the organizing committee of this conference for, for uniting us and, and bringing us in during this COVID time uh, to, to learn more about from, from each other. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, when we introduce you uh, to the area that we're talking about, as you know, the Himalaya is, it was formed by the tectonic convergence between, between India and Eurasia. So that convergence is still going on. That's why we have a lot of earthquakes. So the dead, uh, red dots that you see here are basically earthquakes. And these earthquakes uh, were caused um, by, by the continuous convergence that's happening. And because of convergence, if you move from, from this side to the, so in other words, from east to the west, the convergence goes, uh, it's actually going oblique as you can see from here so here it is more or less normal and then it goes oblique because of the obliquity of the of the arc so the arc is oblique and that is responsible for the Karakoram fault and we also have this chaman fault so in so we have the frontal fault which is the main mega thrust and then we have the Karakoram fault we have the chaman fault system in between we have also jahalim fault jahalim is left lateral chaman is also left lateral this is Karakoram is dextral so as you can see that this entire region is just like a triangular shape. So in between uh, these, we have basins. We have, um, we have a lot of basins basically forming. And with basins, as you know, the lake forms when there's a depression. And those depressions can be caused by either tectonic or non-tectonic causes. But what I understand uh, looking into this um, uh, Himalayan, uh, you know, the organic system, I feel that most of these uh, lakes are like big lakes are created by or directly created by by tectonic forces and and today i'll try to convince you uh with with uh by showing you different um, you know the different examples throughout this area so um this is a geological uh background for people who want to know a little bit of geology about that area so this, these are typical himalayan rocks so, so uh, you can see from here we have these uh uh, you know, the arc rock, so there was a subduction in the past, and we have an arc, we have an island arc on that side, and in between there was a basin, the basin got filled with sediments that, that were basically later bulldozed because of the convergence, uh, because of the continuous um, uh, subduction, and then we have India on this side, Eurasia on that side, in between was a basin, the basin got uh, like bulldozed and, and formed these mighty, uh, beautiful uh, mountain ranges. And with that, the convergence was not just like one-sided uh, kind of thing. It was not just like uh, going uh, as we have seen in the snow, which is basically also there was a lateral extension in, 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 in that direction. And, and also, so, so what it means is that we're not getting this typical uh, reverse faults. We're also getting a sequence of strikes with a normal faults. And when you have faults uh, the, and in the upper, in the, uh, in the crustal, when, when, when the crust breaks, Along these faults, of course, it creates uh, creates these depressions, and those depressions are called basins. And these basins, when get filled with water, can actually form lakes. Some of these lakes have actually uh, preserved for quite some time. Some some are very old, some are new. Uh, so we do have examples where where initially, for example, we had a huge big lake, but now uh, the lake there is no lake. The only thing that we see is our sediments, the lake sediments, uh, and and we've seen many examples of that. And I'll be showing that uh, some of the, so we have also uh, what we've done here. There are some of the big earthquakes, as you can see that this uh, this area is active. So we do have earthquakes uh, going on. And and why I put showing you earthquakes uh, was the connection of earthquakes with lakes. This that if you have an earthquake, you can constantly instantly create a lake. So if there's a big earthquake, a normal fault, for example, or even reverse fault, you can create lakes, or even you can destroy lakes uh, during during faulting during earthquakes if it ruptures the surface or even creates a depression. So therefore, these are very important in terms of uh, how we know and how we understand uh, the basin formation and the link between the basins 
and legs. So, uh, so we put earthquakes on uh, these uh, faults on the top, as you can see here. These are different uh, lines are faults, and we have here, uh, we, uh, you know, you can see from the legend. Uh, so these are these are basically uh, different types of faults, mainly uh, thrust fault and reverse fault here. We have a thrust, you know, fault here, and then we have reverse faults on on the here in the front. As you move away from the front, so we go to the north, we are basically having a lot of normal faults and also strikes that falls. So it's dominated by strikes that were normal falls. So what we do now is we put all of that information and put lake, lakes on top and try to see if there's any any uh, sequence to it. So here we have done that. We put, uh, these are the lake, uh, you can see the boundaries with the lake boundaries and the whites are the areas which, uh, the white, the you know, these, um, uh, the basins that we have mapped and I will be taking you from, from Eastern examples. I will show you some of the examples. I can't show all examples because we don't have time, uh, but I'll show you examples from, from Kashmir and, and we go on until, so, so from, from West to East, um, mostly from the Northwestern portions. Um, here, the Kashmir, so to get, get a context of the Kashmir area, what we have is the Kashmir Basin is sitting on top of this uh, Megathas fault. So when you have a big basin, and it is a huge basin, and it's beautiful because it is surrounded from all sides by the mountains. And uh, so we do, we do have the most of the valleys are like that, but Kashmir is a bit spatial because those mountains are quite high and mostly, uh, mostly, uh, okay, they're mostly covered by snow throughout the year. So that gives it, you know, it beautifies it. And that's why it is one of the most beautiful places uh, on the planet. And, and also, I have not seen any other basin as big as, as Kashmir Basin and as, as beautiful as Kashmir Basin anywhere in this area, at least. We have Peshawar Basin. The Peshawar Basin has a, a bit of different settings, a bit subdued uh, in, in terms of the topography. But Kashmir is really uh, is high, uh, in the high in the mountains and, and, and surrounded by, as I said, uh, by, by uh, mountains. So within the Himalayan range. And so... Um, so I also put earthquakes on the top and try to understand uh, if, if there's a relation between, between the type of the faults and, and, and the basins that we have. So, so here is the Kashmir Basin and uh, what you can see uh, that this basin is mainly the geology is that it is from Pleistocene, like the late Ple uh, Pleistocene uh, to, to Holocene sediments, the very young sediments. Those sediments, when you do the geology of those sediments, they are basically related to the lake deposits. In fact, in the past, they were lake and the glacial deposits. So uh, it clearly tells that the entire Kashmir was a lake in the past. Now, we have evidence that we do have a lake here, we do have a here, um, remnants of the lake, so uh, at the moment, but in the past, it was a big lake. Now, that lake was not really related to glacial lake. It was basically uh, because we have this area here. Um, th there is one only one stream which goes out. So if you if you somehow um, uh, we call this, this is a Jahalim River which goes out. So if you stop this Jahalim River somehow, then this whole area is going to get flooded. And we've seen in 2014 when we had more uh, rain coming here, and it was less time for it to take out because just one stream is taking out uh, is 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 draining it out. So therefore, it was mostly flooded because that uh, rain was quite high, so it flooded. And it flooded areas almost to east of this boundary, um, uh, so northeast of this boundary, and indicating that it is, it is uh, Kashmir is, is prone. So uh, I, I, what my interpretation is that this, this, these basins that we see here, uh, these uh, lakes that we see here, are because of the, uh, the Kashmir, it has an, uh, it is uplifted. And it is high on the north, um, northeast, southwestern side. Southwestern side is high. It is tilted uh, to the northeastern side, and that tilt has created these these basins. So, so what it means is that it's a typical tectonic related um, uh, form of basin plus the lakes. So the lakes and basins as created by the tectonic forces is a clear example of of that. Now we go to the another basin, which is Leh Basin, uh, which is very on the on the Western side of the Krakram fault again. Remember, Krakram is a dextral strikes the fault. So this is this is very spatial in, in that we have Ladakh, which is I told you that this is a uh, the arc. Uh, so so it's an arc, and and then Himalayan rocks. So it's a suture. So that suture has sediments, and those if you go along that area, we find many 
leg deposits, talo leg deposits, which are related, which have been studied and related to the glacial uh, melting, some of them, and, and some of them are, but the basin itself was created by the tectonic forces, and there are some remnants of the lake deposits which have been related to the um, to the glacial melting, as I said, but at the moment you, you have the remnants, you do not have a lake there at the moment, and there are some small lakes which is insignificant for the resolution that I'm showing you. Um, this is another very beautiful example of, of a normal fault and a big lake. So we have normal fault, north-south turning normal fault, and it is here, as you can see, it's again on the eastern side of the Crocker Fault and the normal fault uh, and, and the basin. So, so directly related to the, uh, directly related to the tectonics. Um, and so we have north-south normal faults and uh, it gives us an east-west extension and that you can relate to the, uh, this, uh, the convergence between India and Eurasia. So the convergence between India and Eurasia is almost northeast-southwest. So you would expect a northwest-southeast extension and that extension will create normal faults that we have here. So I feel that, I mean, I, my interpretation is that it is directly related to the convergence that we're seeing between India and Eurasia. And this is active area, which I will show in a moment, uh, even though it's interior, but it is, it is active. So uh, this is coming from uh, from the tail of tail end of basic Crocker Fault. In fact, that from the uh, when you go to the southern side of the south uh, southeastern side of the Crocker Fault. So these basins, uh, some of these are filled with water. So they, they are lakes also. But the, as you can see, that the basin was created along the trace of the normal fault because the Crocker normal fault Crocker Fault is a strike slip fault with a normal component. So it is a typical uh, typical. Uh, what do you call this? this? Is a typical way or a typical um, structural um, procedure in which you can have a normal fault and strike slip fault. Uh, the component, uh, uh, the strike slip fault, have, fault has a component of normal fault, and that is creating these basins. So it is an extensional system where you're creating pull apart basins, basically. Um, uh, uh, you know, you can classify them as pull aparts, and they're created by the strike slip system, and we've seen them constantly more or less everywhere. So here, for example, is another example uh, as you move down, and I'll show you in a moment later uh, where they all fit. They basically fit uh, a pull-apart setting, all of these uh, basins and normal faults, which is related to that. So, so what we have got so far is that these all examples show you from going from here, and so that means in the front, you're getting basically mostly piggybacks. And as you move away from the front, you're dominated by normal and strike slip faults. So some of them will be rift basins, and some of them will be related to the, as I've shown you one example from the rift, the other examples are, uh, are pull apart settings. So, so to keep this in, uh, try to understand what basically is happening, what we did here is that we have active deformation domain. So in other words, we put earthquakes, fault plane solutions on the top and try to, to actually um, classify this entire deformation into different domains. So, so in other words, this area here is dominated by strike slip and normal faults. This, uh, the pinkish area is dominated by, by rivers and thrusts. Uh, this area is uh, having a compression. So in other words, strike slip and thrust, strike slip and thrust. This is dominated by strike slip system. So therefore, this uh, the entire area is, so therefore you would expect in this area, uh, mainly the basins and uh, lakes should be related to strikes of a normal fault. That's what we said, uh, what we have seen. And here in this area, you would expect mostly piggyback basins and we've seen that. So it makes it makes very clean and clear case of how the basins and lakes are related to the tectonic convergence that we've seen. Yeah, uh, so this is uh, what I did now. I actually related these basins with, for example, the basin examples that I have. So from here, as you can see, this is mainly normal late to the rift type and normal in strikes the rift and pull apart. So for example, in this area, as you can see this area here, uh, where I showed you example, it clearly shows that there is an, there is an uh, you know, this, uh, this is a diamond-shaped region. If you move from here, this entire region is a diamond-shaped region, and that has been offset. And when it is offset, so in between, you're creating these uh, chain of normal faults, which makes beautiful sense. So whenever you have, a, so this is basically dominantly, um, 
what do you call this, uh, under the influence of uh, strike slip system, which is Crocrum fault. This is not under the influence of strike slip. I feel that this is merely normal faulting. I mean, oh, the, the earthquakes that you see there, plus the, the basin type. The basins are more or less north-south, north but there, here, the basins have an orientation. They are more or less, the orientation of those basins, uh, you know, uh, they are north and southeast, more or less parallel to the to the to the strikes of system, but here they are north south, so indicating that this is normal convergence, while as this is oblique convergence, which makes a, a clear case for that. So, so to put this all together, what we think is that this is uh, the 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 basin uh, here. So in the front in the frontal fault, we have the fold and thrust belt, and the basins are mainly related. Basins and lakes are mainly related to thrusting. Um, and which will create pig, piggyback basins and fold basins related to the folding. While as we go interior areas where you have a crustal extension, north and southeast extension created by the normal faults uh, and a strike slip system. So in other words, that area has dominant norm, uh, normal and strike slip systems and that's what is controlling the basin formation. Uh, thank you very much. It's almost 15 minutes and I would uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to have many questions from you. Thank you.